the masses into the new media counterculture and away from the media establishment here is the king of podcasts welcome back to the program this is king of podcasts another podcast movement is ongoing right now without yours truly but you know i've already made my comments about that last week this week we're going to talk about audio because there are some things that are coming out now from the likes of spotify and sirius xm we're going to talk about that tonight on the program also Various things when it comes to new technology, new disruptors into the space. AI radio hosts. Yeah, that is the possibility out there. We've been hearing about it. We're going to talk about it tonight. We'll also talk about more realities that are concerning radio and AI music. Also, the fact that the creators are embracing AI to pump out tracks. And there are tech companies out there to make sure it's not just a bunch of nonsense. Plus... A big music veteran now coming into the space to go against the music business. We're going to talk all about that. And then some other things about ESPN, movie theaters. We'll bring that all up here on the program tonight. Thanks for listening in, subscribing, wherever you find podcasts. Listen, and I appreciate some of you that will go look for the show on YouTube. It's getting a little traction. Just look for Ad King of Podcasts on YouTube. Also, the link to the page is on my website, broadcasterspodcast.com. All the past episodes, all previous 268 episodes are up there for you to peruse and look at for yourselves. So let's start, first of all, the lead feature of the Broadcasters Podcast this week about Spotify. And they're making some significant changes. LA Times put out a nice, big, long piece about this. Daniel Eck, the CEO of Spotify, spoke in front of a crowd. And they introduced a series of new podcasts, number one. Partnerships and features as part of this effort to dominate in all things audio, despite recent challenges and controversies in the space. Now, as podcast movement evolutions is going on right now, not only are they coming with announcements, there was another one at iHeartRadio made now with another podcast studio that does a lot of LGBTQ plus content. That was something that was brought out there. Every major podcast company right now is putting out announcements. And so, in Los Angeles... Spotify makes the point that they're going to be launching exclusive video episodes. They're going to be working with online content creator Mark Pillier. Mark Pillier. Markiplier? How do you say that? Markiplier. I asked what a pro it is. So there are shows that they have, including Distractable and Go, my favorite sports team. And then there's a scripted Batman spinoff series called The Riddler, Secrets in the Dark, and starring Hassan Minaj. And there will be other podcasts in a traditionally audio-focused format, but that incorporating video might be a big part of its future. They boast 70,000 video creators already on the platform. We now have a new video podcast with Julia Fox named Anka Jams. (laughs) Of course she would call it that. A new video podcast called Forbidden Fruits coming out later this month. And TikToker Drew Afwalo has a new podcast, The Comment Section, Oh, excuse me. The comment section now, which will now become a Spotify exclusive in April. If you haven't heard of Drew Afwalo, she's a male basher. So, I mean, look, she's got her lane. She's going with it. I don't necessarily care for the comments because she just doesn't like men. Or for whatever reason, she just has a problem with men. And she is not afraid to go ahead and speak her piece about it. Good. Okay. Well, you know what? Maybe that's something I'll bring up, bring up on my uh, The Praise of the Botrus podcast, which, by the way, you can catch that over at ddradio.live, or you can find a link on the website, broadcasterspodcast.com. So, Daniel Eck, the chief executive, talks about Spotify's rapid growth in podcasting. It's gone from 10 million podcast listeners in 2018 to over 100 million. Now, all these new podcasting announcements still come at the point where There have been cuts, which many media companies are going through. 11 podcasts were cut from the roster, and other people were laid off of their podcast brands. Like the 6% of staff has been cut. So Spotify is trying to be a leader in the podcast space, we know. 
and they want to bring in new subscribers and diversify its offerings beyond music, even as investors have sometimes expressed doubt about the play. Look, they're trying. Don't get me wrong. I am a Spotify fan, okay? I buy the family plan, by the way, for myself and the rest of the family. And I've had it, I think, since 2017. I like it a lot. It's very consistent. I have several playlists I use. If you want to jump on those, by the way, I have three different playlists if you want to go check them out for yourself. One is a brand new playlist that I listen to a lot of new music on. And by the way, anybody that gets in my Uber car on the weekends, you'll actually hear these playlists playing on my Spotify throughout. One is a Soundtrack of South Florida, which is everything going from the late 80s all the way to the current day. Music we would hear in Miami when it comes to the clubs, when it comes to the bars, when it comes to just the whole atmosphere. Soundtrack of South Florida. Just look for King of Podcasts and follow it. Hey, take a like to it. Listen to the playlist. See what you think about it. It's a long playlist. It's very expansive and very intuitive because I went ahead and dug deep for looking for songs that I knew would be part of that playlist. I need to be part of the playlist because of my radio expertise. I also have Timeless Hits, which now has over 100 hours of music from the rock and roll era all the way to the 90s, early 90s. Talking about everything from Pop music, everything that would have been on the Billboard Hot 100, some soundtrack stuff, doo-wop, blues, j- uh, a little bit of jazz, reggae, and a lot of folk rock, a lot of rock itself, a lot of soul, a lot of good stuff in there. Take a look at that for yourselves. We also know there have been partnerships that have been so far done with Kim Kardashian, Meghan Markle, and Jordan Peele. By the way, Anchor is no longer Anchor. It's not going to be Spotify for podcasters from now on. Now, another thing that hasn't happened yet. At the 2021 stream on, the company announced a partnership with the Russo brothers, who did Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame. They were going to do a podcast. Nothing's happened. Oscar-nominated director Ava DuVernay has cut t- ties with Spotify. And there were others that also took their music off this platform after Joe Rogan made some comments that he was spreading COVID misinformation on his show. And so there were people that pulled the music for the platform, others pulling podcasts off of there. So they had their controversy according to the LA Times. I decided to go ahead and add that into here as well. Now, as I mentioned, the re-envision spot for, for Podcasters Hub will centralize the company's podcasting tools, monetization tech, as well as video podcasting and interactive episode capabilities in one place. And they're also doing a new partnership with Patreon, aimed at making it easier for podcasters to turn listeners into paying customers. Okay, that's great. Now, we also know that NPR is going to start monetizing with Spotify through the app's ad marketplace, but they will not be putting their content on the app, it looks like. They're not going to be publishing through the app yet. That's not happening. We also know about the audiobooks, which that's nice. They acquired a hurdle, a music guessing game, Bought Locker Room the, it was a live audio conversations gap. Like, that's like Clubhouse. There's a lot of things you're working on. I hope they just kind of figure out Spotify where they're just going to kind of downsize and just streamline what they're doing here because there's so much they're trying to get into. And I appreciate the effort because they want to be the end-all be-all of audio. And there is a war of where we're seeing that happening where somebody wants to be the leader in digital audio and digital streaming and all digital audio content in general. Everybody's trying to be there. And I can appreciate that effort. They're all trying. It doesn't need to be that we can listen to. Can we just have content that's just out for everybody out there? For Spotify, most importantly, they are one place that you can find a lot of podcasts on, including all my shows, by the way. You can find all my podcasts there. The other thing is, is they have that, they have the music. The audiobooks, I'm still an audible guy, and where I need to go for that is good. I just wish there was more of a system where more books would be made into audiobooks, but we're getting a good amount right now. I can't complain about that. But there's got to be more that's done where the direction that's being done right now with Spotify, I think a couple weeks ago I brought up the DJ version that they have now of their service i tried it i hated it because they're trying to use something that's like okay the same voice the same kind of lingo and style 
That's supposed to work for everybody, and it doesn't. I just don't care. And so I don't like what they're doing with it. I tried it. I turned it off. And that's okay. I mean, they're trying. I think trying to do more things like what Amazon's doing with AMP is a good idea. Having people actually individually be able to do radio programs on there and do it live. Because I think if people were able to go and do it live on their own, and imagine they don't have to go and do... Like, think about it like this. For AMP to be what it is, and hopefully it works out well, there were a lot of people like myself that didn't mind dabbling at the underground radio stations. Again, when Pirate Radio was a thing about 15 years ago, maybe even a little bit more than that. I mean, look, between when I got out of college, when I graduated, roughly between, what, 98 to about 2007, I think it was, I worked on underground radio because I wanted to get myself on the radio and continue to get my voice out there for as much as I could. And I worked on a number of stations like that. I mean, I worked on one reggae, a couple of reggae stations, as a matter of fact. Because I had a friend of mine who was able to help me get into some of these stations because I was, you know, I knew him because he was kind of the engineering side. And college radio, Ford Atlantic University's radio station, WOWL, they actually was, it was a station they actually had with those call letters. And it ran from what, 90, 90, what, 1993 to, was it 2000? It was on FM for a while. It was actually kind of cool. For whatever reason, you know, FCC found out about it. Said it was violating Chapter 15. Okay. Took it down. So the FAU radio station now continues in an online status, which is fine. FAU Al Radio. It's just unfortunate that we don't have... I would like to have people that have the wherewithal to go and want to do radio just like it was then. Kind of a studio feel to it. Because it would be great if that could happen. I'm all in for it. I enjoyed the times where I went to get somebody some studio, even though like, the equipment was not going to be uh, above par or anything overly special, but I knew it was transmitting out. And I knew that my friend actually knew how to get the things, get the uh, transmitters going so everything sounded good. So I know that if I was going to get heard out there at all, it was going to sound good. So I was glad to go and hear that. Got to play the music I wanted to play. Would go on like three, four, five hours, whatever it was. I enjoyed it. I had a good old time doing it. I always had that itching to do that again. But podcasting's kind of taken that place. And for people that want to be in the mood of doing talk is great. But we haven't gotten to the point where we're getting to the point of music. Because I think that is the missing part of podcasting. If you want to talk about the evolution of podcasting in general. The platforms here that are trying to go and create content is using and utilizing the content. It is the existing music that's out there. And since it's all in one place, Spotify needs to be the next place that does the amp-like stuff. Give us a live DJ component where people can be live DJs and use their playlists curated to create something. I would love to do that. Imagine if you had your current playlist. What did you listen to all the time right now? Or you created a playlist just for the purpose of you talking in between the records. Imagine if you could do that. And you give your take on the music. You could talk about other things that are going on. Have a little quip. You know, quick little joke. I'm one of those people that's still in the car. Listen, I'm going to just... I'm going to out myself on this. Some of you radio files, I'm sure, do the same thing. Okay? Especially with older music. Especially on my timeless sets playlist. Talk about a song that's coming out that's it's a song that's playing on the Spotify playlist from the sixties, seventies, or eighties. More or less I've heard those songs over and over and over, but because this playlist I have is so expansive, I got what at least sixteen hundred songs out on that playlist, over a hundred hours. If I hear a song, I know more or less kind of the intuitiveness on how long the bed is. The music that's playing before the first lyric is sung or recited I can usually hit the post that's what we talk about and that was a science it's not something where I need a countdown clock to know that but I could do that a lot of times I know how to go and just hit the post and not even think about it just an internal clock but what happened was 
in the car all the time. If I'm by myself in the car, I will go on. I will create whatever radio radio station I want to think it is. I'll create the persona. I'll have the voice. I'll even do a voice. And I will then say, okay, here's the time. Here's the temp. Here's what the song is. Here's what's going on outside, whatever. And I'll just make some kind of quip to let up to hit the post. I've been doing that since I was, what, 16, 17 years old? I mean, going back to what was even younger than that, I would go ahead and just play, use my tape player to record, talk into it. I still remember I had one tape player that was really cool. It was I forget which brand it was, but it was a black cassette player, dual cassette deck. For whatever reason, I was able to go ahead and record on one side, play something on one side, and myself. You hear, then you can hear the microphone, hear the music, and then it would play into another recording. Man, that was the best. I don't remember what that was, but I remember for a couple of years I had that, and I was having a good old time with it. I think I was even able to go ahead and record the radio and hear myself talk in the microphone. Did it sound great? Not really, but it was fun to do. And I did it for a while. But I like the DJ component. And I've gone through various leads to do that. I still remember a friend of mine that actually had a pirate radio station, the last one I got on. And I remember I wanted to get on with him but I couldn't go to the studio because he was, you know, where he has, where he lived, it was like very private, very desolate. It's like out in the woods. So what he did was he set me up where I could broadcast to him through my computer, stream whatever I was talking to him from, and he would just play it back. And he would just give me the station for a couple of hours to go and do what I wanted to do. Okay. He would also give me music to go and play. And I would put some other stuff out there that I had. And I would go ahead and talk a little bit. And he would tell me, like, hey, don't talk too much. To do this and that, you know? I go, all right, that's fine. And I had fun with it. But that DJ component, I will go along and say, I want something like that more often. Because that would be great to do. I'm really telling you this. So if Spotify was looking for my two cents worth of what to do to become that all-in-all one stop shop for audio, that's what you do. Not only is it the, the, where you're doing other podcasts out there, no, let's let people be the DJs and do the music. Because once you do that, what's going to happen is you're basically going to eliminate radio altogether. Because if radio's not going to get their act together, Spotify, Pandora, you can take the radio audience away. If you start doing things where you can play radio yourself, People will find their way to get some Bluetooth action in their cars, because by now they have Bluetooth. You'll render FM and AM radio obsolete. AM radio is already getting obsolete now, because now I've seen more and more vehicles not putting AM, FM radio, or AM radio in the car. The new Ford Mustang model, no AM radio, none. Taking it out of their infotainment. It's going to keep going. But it's fine if they're going to just let AM radio go by the wayside and that's where it is. Because how many radio stations are out there that are worthwhile? There's not many that are really doing the service of the public. Uh, not a lot. I think, honestly, we're getting to the point where radio doesn't need that many stations in every market. I think there's a lot of redundancy. And I think there's a lot of stations that are just not doing that much except for just being jukeboxes. I really think that, because if I look right now at just the West Palm Beach market, and I look at the what stations they have that are doing things, and I'll tell you, they're not doing much. But if they, if you had to tell me, first of all, I haven't been looking at all at radio station ratings in a long time. It's been a while. Okay, for instance, in the West Palm Beach market, Market number 47. The current market and the January personal people meter rating show that Hubbard Radio has the top three most listened to radio stations in the market. And that is being WMR, WRMF, which is a hot AC format, which is the Kevin, Virginia, and Jason morning show, KVJ. And because of that morning show, it just dominates the market. 
uh, the BEAT, which is Sunny 104, was 107.9, which is hosted by Jennifer Ross and uh, Mike Adams, right? Would you do a recorded show while they're doing a live show on A50 WTL, right? And WMBX, X102.3, that's the Urban AC station, or Urban Station, more or less. That's also now third in the market, among all this everything else. Other than that, there is the Gator, which is classic rock. I'm really just not even need that station much for anything. Cool 105.5, another AC station, not much needed. WIRK, country. The thing is, some of these stations aren't necessarily necessary. I mean, there might not be a lot of people that will listen for Christian contemporary, but there is a market for that. Some of the fringe formats are probably still more or less useful, right? When you look at, okay, regional Mexican, probably. But multiple news talk stations, multiple sports stations, multiple Spanish stations, among other things that they have, don't really do too much for me. Kind of just lay off the wayside. And I just say to myself, there's a lot of stations that are just repetitive. Do we really need them? Not necessarily. I don't think so anyway. But it's one of those things that we have here. And I said to myself, there's so much that radio could do themselves. Then there's the option of Sirius XM, which is supposed to be the replacement for radio because they are supposed to cover every genre out there and every kind of direction or demographic there might be or an audience that might be of interest. Sirius XM says there's a day they will no longer require satellites to reach listeners. And look at the growth of the customer base reaching millions of cars internet enabled. They want to relaunch their streaming product by the end of the year with some of the knowledge that's learned from Pandora to the XSM X, SXM app. The CFO Sean Sullivan says we need to with the features, the functionalities, and recommendations reduce the friction. And they want to make some moves behind the scenes that will give them more agility and flexibility in a subscriber management, making it easier to adopt price increases. So SiriusXM wants to push their own internet delivery despite the company having its own streaming music service. Pandora's reach continues to shrink. It's down 5 million users from year to year. 47.6 million monthly active users now. But because of Pandora, they have a better idea of the online business. So there's benefits to building streaming for themselves. Streaming is part of their in-car subscription, enhancing the experience. Subscribers listening effectively doubled compared to those who had the, the satellite delivered content. But Sirius6M also has found a way to get on the addressable digital advertising market. Streaming only subscribers still are a small portion of the company's 32.4 million subscriber base. They're going to plan price hikes and raw increases to its rates this month that customers will pay an additional $1 to its full price plans. But they don't expect to see too many cancellations and they'll still offer personal discounted rates to new subscribers coming on board. And then SiriusXM, while they're putting all that news out there, is also going through their layoffs. 475 people or 8% of the total workforce. But meanwhile, they say the content's not going to be affected. But there's not much of that light in the light of ad spending and what we'll do to kind of turn things around for their product. But even they think, well, we got to be streaming them ourselves. We need to get back. We need to go and just get off the satellites because obviously just that kind of cost push is probably not helping. They need to be able to get themselves streaming. That's a lot of work to get with that, take that platform and move it over like that. That's a lot of work. I don't know how they're going to do it, though. They're going to try, though. And offset the cost of moving the streaming and pass it along to the customers. Hey, everybody wins, right? Slate Magazine, or Slate.com, put out an interesting story about AI. This should scare people. Radio GPT. You remember where we talked about Futuri a few weeks ago? Well, that's brought up here. It can research, it can take your calls, it can be coming to your market. So let's talk about it. 
Now, they start off pretty strong in a bit of a rant that would be something that yours truly would be proud of. So I'll take this. The humble broadcast radio host, you know, because radio is a cruel mistress, whether disc jockey or interviewer or reporter, has been going at it for decades from now. The 1996 Telecommunications Act fueled the consolidation of local stations decimating their staffs. If you want a full rundown of that act and what it has done to the radio business, then please look for my episode that is about that because I went on vehemently and really took a number when it came to that story about the, what the Telecommunications Act of 1986 did to bury the music business. If you want to give me a second, I will tell you which episode number to look for so you can find it yourself because you should look for it yourself. Yes, here we go. Episode 175. It was from May 21st, 2021. The 25th anniversary of the act passing. I put that out there. By the way, pretty good uh, run for that episode. About as good as you can get. So I do like that part. And I never made this comment, but you know what? This is one of the things that... This was a comment that was made a while back. Jason Myers wrote this on that story about the that episode in particular. I want to take this right now and read it. This was done to cover up what they were doing with the music industry executives. They own private prisons. They push gangster rap to encourage a culture of crime. Allowing them to become a monopoly means the government controls all the media. The reason he changed the allotment from 25 to 35% because two companies could own the majority. All media stems from the same three or four companies. Look up Interscope and the fact that they were owned by all three companies. Look at the secret meeting about hip-hop. Then you'll know who killed Biggie and Tupac. You know, the reason it was done is so they could push two biased political stances to distract us. We're not a democracy. Oh, this is going a little more into the... I understand. So if anybody understands, the ending part of this comment might be considered controversial. But he says, you know, the Freemasons Illuminati are very real and very much in control. Name one person involved in politics and entertainment. Nero, Caesar, or 666 the Beast. We're in the devil's world. That's from Jason Myers. Made a comment on that. So now back to the story. The explosion of online radio, music, and video, streaming, and podcasting have upended ratings for, for shows on public airways. Phones and computers. As smart speakers increasingly supplant radio sets. Funding for public radio is known notoriously unreliable. It isn't the best time for your modern-day Wolfman Jacks. Nah, well, the Wolfman Jack, but no, that ain't it. Or any music, or any, I'm sorry, I just did that. I just did that, I'm sorry. Wolfman Jack. I just saw a story on TikTok. They showed the obituary from a, a story that came up about him, and uh, I don't know, I just saw that. By the way, a quick tangent. I finally think I got my radio card back. Like, if I wanted to be a legitimate radio person, I saw one of the most quintessential radio movies ever made that I had to watch, FM. I had not watched it yet. You know why? Because I couldn't find the movie to watch it. Because I didn't... It wasn't until later on, you know, about a decade or so ago, I wanted to go and watch it. I couldn't find it. And then somebody on YouTube did the courtesy of putting the movie on YouTube so I could watch it. And now I see the benefit of it, and it's a great movie, especially for a radio fan. But that is not the movie that enticed me to get into the radio business in the first place. The movie that inspired me to get into radio, Christian Slater, Samantha Mathis, Pump Up the Volume. That movie will continue to be the movie that inspired me to be in radio, because I was like, all in after that. Tell you what. So the AI, artificial intelligence hype. We already know that things have been going on with the media space that are all changing up, right? Media ad markets demolished. On air talent getting gutted. Syndicated well known shows and brands pre recording and pre arranging late night broadcast. Trending a roboticized voice to fill in the space when needed. Major streaming services, dependence on algorithms and automation to create playlists and make user recommendations with bizarre side effects, developers made clear that the music industry anticipates the need for fewer humans down the line. And AI has has not yet finished killing the radio star, 
or nor likely to anytime soon. But now we have Futuri's Radio GPT. It fully digitizes the broadcast just as you know it. It's already worked with large corporations like iHeartMedia and Tribute Publishing with this new and revolutionary product. Of course, iHeartMedia would be in this. I mean, they need to be into some technology they can go ahead and replace more people. That's what they wanted to do. So there's a few tools. One is Topic Pulse, an app that provides an, agile, an automated way to scan media sources, pull out relevant topics for coverage. GPT-3, a large language model that powers the hat, hit chatbot chat by UPT, and AI voice personalities that can learn the info script by Topic Pulse and aggregate it to GPT-3 to read ready-made copy live on air. As trained to know all available facts about the music played by your station, so it can even intro upcoming tracks and provide trivia as needed. It's currently being tested by large radio owners in the U.S. and Canada. It seems pretty good, they say. It's accomplished enough to reawaken the worst case fears regarding the future of human radio jobs, no matter what you th make of radio GPT's humanoid talent. Now, they talked to the people that created this product, uh, CEO Daniel Anstandig and CFL Marty Chagrin. And they go through and go through a full Q&A about what they're doing. I mean, look, if they get perfected, yeah, the radio as we know it will not need the human component. They can find a way to get rid of it. That's what iHeartRadio wants to do. If they can get that done in enough time to offset costs and avoid having to pay royalties, oh, they're, they think they might be able to turn a profit. And that's what they're hoping for. If that's what they want to do, they're going to do it. There's no choice in that at all. What are we going to do at all? It sucks. I'm not happy about it. Nobody else is happy about it. It's just what they're going to do. Now, before I move on to some more AI talk when it comes to music, there is something very interesting. The share of ear study from Edison Research, they put out a report about advertiser perceptions. And the advertisers believe out of 300 of them that were, stu that were stu in the study, they thought that Advertisement agencies think the share of audio times with AM, FM radio is less than combined streaming, which means that they think that there's more money to be made in the ad space from Pandora or Spotify and other places than there is AM, FM radio. That's not good. The audience share of AM, FM radio is 18 times larger than ad supported Spotify and 15 times larger than ad supported Pandora. That might be facts, but what's happening is Trust in radio for advertising and for sponsorship is waning. That's what's going on. So now we're hearing that part. And notice that podcasters' share of time has spent has grown since the pandemic. Streaming now is twenty percent of all of AM FM radio listening among men age twenty five to fifty four years old. And that podcast daily reach has grown sharply with no signs of stopping. And it's happening among all age groups, not just Gen Z millennials. There we go. And Spotify, people that go to Spotify, 23% of them spend their time most on the podcasting side. Interesting. A couple of the quick stories I want to just bring up here on the program before we wrap things up that I thought would be interesting to include. Billboard talking with Alpa, the, with an Apple Music executive, Larry Jackson. Uh, one thing they had was a play about uh, people embracing AI music. We're now hearing about BandLab, the music creation app that has become popular on TikTok, relying on AI as the engine for its tool song starter. So users can lean on it to generate beats or melodies at random prompted to spit something out based on specific lyrics and emojis. It already has 60 million registered users and more than 17 million songs are churned out each month. Wow. That's one of the things that are coming out now. 
And as I mentioned with Larry Jackson, he launched Gamma, which is bringing unprecedented private equity to the frontline music business. So the music business now has to worry about a music company that will actually generate money and already put the backing for being able to go and do where they have a lot of capital, a lot of money behind where they can go and do a lot of work. It's a one-stop shop media company creating, distributing, marketing content from music to podcast to films, offering resources and guidance to artists who want to build their brands and expand beyond music. And this new venture has already $1 billion available in equity and debt. And Jackson thinks that with his distribution pipeline, a bevy of big name acts, an array of culture driving shows, an alliance with Indian indie film and TV studio A24, Gimba can give TikTok a run for its money, become the new radio when you can actually break records. Plus, they sell goods like concert tickets to beauty products. Very ambitious. But that's something that's also coming up in the pipeline as well. And not only is Sirius XM one of the one of the leaders in streaming now, so does ESPN. And CBC, CNBC put us three out, which I get a chance to go and talk about last week. They're talking about major sports leagues and partners about launching a feature that would link direct users directly to where a live sporting event is streaming. And the media partners have not yet been determined and no time when the feature will launch. It would include global streaming services and direct-to-consumer regional sports network products, making ESPN the TV guide of live sports. Interesting. And then the other thing I also want to make mention of, which ties in line with what I was doing this past weekend, for the first time in the movie theater, I went to go see something besides a movie. So, I'm a big wrestling fan. Some of you probably already know I do a wrestling podcast. Wrestling is a real podcast. I've been doing it since 2012. It's the first show that preceded this program on the King of Podcasts radio network. And I said, okay, here I am. And with the movie theaters, they ran a wrestling pay-per-view. Half the price it would be to watch it from home. But they same movie experience. Popcorn with the drinks, all that stuff. And I'm enjoying myself. Have a good old time. It was fun to watch. I enjoyed it. The fact that it was normally 50 bucks if I watched it at home and 26 bucks to watch where I'm at. Yeah, I like it. Pretty good. Overall, enjoyed it. CNBC put out a story about this and they talked about all the things that are being done by movie theaters now to continue to renovate and uh, kind of re- revolutionize themselves recreate some new experience for real to go they talked to the chairman of the National Association of Theater Owners Rolando Rodriguez most newly built locations are ranging between 12 and 16 screens with larger pre-existing footprints looking to repurpose some space for supplementary activities like arcades bowling alleys or bars some are innovating even as Hollywood production returns to normal uh, cinema operators are investing in the basics, improving sounds, picture quality, seating, as well as bolstering in food and beverage offerings and alter- events and alternative programming. Improving the baseline experience for moviegoers regardless of the type of ticket they purchase. Right. So, listen. From my end of the point, Regal Cinemas, you're going to get a good review from me. When I go to the Regal Stadium 18, Royal Palm Beach... You know, they did all the work of renovating the theater in terms of all the other seats, better sound, the popcorn still tastes good. I buy a bag all, just about every time I go. It's fresh. I love it. Pepsi products in the theater, that's fine with me. Pepsi Zero, I like it, tastes good. Candy section's fine. You know, if I want hot food, I'm not necessarily in the big of the hot food, but I remember trying a hot dog over there and it's good. The bar they now have, or if you want to go and buy some drinks before you go in, it's very good. Solid. Getting into the theater now and picking up tickets, whether it's through the kiosk up front or wanting to buy it while you're buying concessions, that works for me too. The Regal app itself is very functional, and when I want to buy tickets, I can do it right now. Hell, I got the buy for Operation Fortune for Friday. I'm going to go and watch that this weekend. And then Shazam the following week. Which is good. 
I'm talking about getting a 65 on the dinosaurs with the end of driver. No, I'm not that. And there's something else. Oh, Scream 6? No, I'm not watching that either. No. Okay. Pass. And so one of the senior vice presidents of a regional chain called Malco Theater says we need to do better when people get into the habit of seeing. Well, we're going to recreate the habitual effect and on Friday nights or Saturday nights or whatever it is, we're going to go to the buoys. Foot traffic has improved since the pandemic, but still behind pre-pandemic levels. And there are other theaters who are looking to go ahead and improve sound systems. Partnering with companies like Dolby to bring quality speakers into their auditoriums. There was a story I kept reading about in terms of the picture quality and the sharpening of the picture. I don't know what they're talking about. Any screen that my theater actually looks just fine, so I don't know what they're talking about. But there's all this thought. I don't know which theaters they're talking about that are doing so bad. A lot of theaters are replacing outdated stadium seating with recliners. Like, I think most of the theaters where I'm at all have stadium, or have new uh, recliners now, leather seats. So, AMC, Regal, Cinemark are now trying to create alternative programming in the form of live events. Cinema setting up streams for concerts, sports, and even Dungeons & Dragons campaigns. Like I said, AEW Revolution I watched this weekend, this past weekend. Enjoyed it. What a great way to watch movies. It was really, really good. Cineopolis, which oh, operates more than two dozen cinemas in the United States. For instance, they're doing something with innovating food and beverages. Offering a luxury dining theater chain with a wide variety of food and beverages. Chicken wings and lobster tacos. Also have a movie and a meal set up. There's a thing, there's a movie theater right next to me. It gets uh, the CMX theaters inside the mall while it's in green. And they have a restaurant right next to it called Cask and Shaker. You can order like a burger or whatever you want. And you can go inside and enjoy the movies. And a nice setup, by the way. A good living room setup over there. Flat. I like that. But the streaming stuff is good. Because I like they're going to see more where it's going to come from. I'd like to see more of that. That's good. That's the show for this week, folks. Thanks for listening in. Finding it as you always do. We'll keep an eye on the radio stuff going on. Okay? Spotify, the audio wars continue. It's really where the real action is happening right now, more than anything else. So I'll keep an eye on it for you right here on the program. Until next week, remember the content is king and the control of your content is in your hands. Thank you for listening to the Broadcasters Podcast. Find all the links to subscribe to the show by going to broadcasterspodcast.com. And don't forget to check out the King of Podcasts wrestling program, the Wrestling is Real Podcast, exclusively at wrestlingisreal.com.